Welcome to Keeping Tabs. I'm Tab the Croc, and every Monday, I talk to someone here in North Idaho, the goal to connect more people in the Coeur d'Alene area. And then every Friday, I talk to someone outside the community to bring in a new perspective and to learn a little bit about yourself. Do you love Pacific Northwest as much as I do and want to show it off everywhere you go? I have the best apparel for you. Go to Forever Green PNW. So that's Forever E R G R N P N W. Uh, .com or on their social media and go check them out. They have the best apparel. They have sweatshirts, they have hoodies, they have tees, they have swimsuits. They've got all kinds of great things to represent the Pacific Northwest. And they also are doing something really cool, little deals with their hoodies. So go check out them. They're fantastic and have a fantastic day. I have a special guest today with me, uh, Catherine Reynolds. Um, she is doing all kinds of wonderful things, um, both locally in our community in Spokane. Um, tell us kind of, Catherine, well, first of all, thank you for joining me. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of what you're doing right now. Well, yeah. Okay. So I've been in Spokane and Hayden area for 23 years. Um, and I know this because my son's 23 and literally he was five days old when we moved here. So, um, love the area. We were in Seattle for, 10 years before that, and then originally from Texas. So I do miss my Texas heat, especially right now. <laughs> but, um, um, I went back to school. I was education major, but I went back um, to get my counseling certificate. Do you hear my dog squeaky toy? Is that so annoying? No, it's, I love it. It brings always, whenever I do interviews, it's always fun when the dog like has a bark or like. I know the cat's going to jump up in my lap, but yeah, no, I, <laughs> I've been on the board of directors. I mean, so kids and animals are my passion. You know, they're they're the innocent and the helpless. I mean, we have to help them or otherwise, you know, what's going to happen to this world in general. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, absolutely. So I've been on um, the board of directors for the Spokane Humane Society. This is my ninth year. My final year, I'm actually kicked off because you can only be do three, three-year terms. So I'm very sad about that. Oh. Um, I might try to join the Kootenai board. because There just, you go. You can just come over to our side. I know. I know. And help the animals there. And I want to bridge this. And that's what I love about bridging. I mean, every community wants, you know, to do the best they can for their constituents, for their people, you know? So, um, Obviously, there's a lot of partnering that we can do with the Kootenai Humane Society. I mean, they're doing great things. There's a lot of partnering like the Ida Five, you know, the Idaho Drug Free Youth and Daybreak Youth Services. I mean, everyone's against underage um, drug and alcohol abuse. I mean, so why would we not support that as a nation and as, as a community? So I went back to school to get my counseling um, degree in addiction studies. And it's quite fascinating and it's changed. I mean, and I think I graduated just from the Spokane Falls um, six years ago. It's a phenomenal program and it's changed a lot. And even a lot of the terminology now it's called substance use disorder instead of addiction studies. Um, and I've just learned a lot. I mean, obviously the suicide, right? Like you, you don't, it's politically incorrect to say um, they committed suicide. Yes. Now the proper term is, you know, he or she took, took their life, his or her life. So um, there's just a lot of changes. And now there are, I think, 80 different recognized gender identities. I mean, that's something, wow. I mean, you can just Google it, how many, and it changes all the time. I mean, it's just like, yeah, I've got to go back for more. There's always, you know, going back for training for, um, all, all of this. I mean, I can't even remember more than five, you know, different genders, but we see it. It's so much more common now at daybreak. And so um, I'm kind of rambling. I'm kind of all over the place. I have a double coffee. Um, yeah. So I don't know more about daybreak. Yeah. Or I think let's dive a little more into daybreak. I was very lucky and fortunate to be able to actually 
get a tour. Uh, I don't know. That was a few years ago. I think um, I might have been working for the children's village or something. Yes. Um, yeah. And so I came the tour and it was, it blew my mind. So maybe tell us a little bit what daybreak is. And then we also talked about the, the sex trafficking and kind of talk a little bit, maybe daybreak, and then tell us a little bit what you're doing with that now. Exactly. No. Um, and it's really cool Tampa, that we're doing this today because in this spokesman review, a big article came out about the sex trafficking. It's in the, it's in the spokesman Yay. today. Go um, read it. <laughs> I know. I know that I was just like looking at it right before it's like, Oh, and, oh my gosh. Um, so Sarah Spear, she's basically my boss, my little best friend. Um, she's like your age. She's just darling. Um, she was the one that was in the article but it talks about our grand opening um, of the sex trafficking receiving center. And we are the first in the state and the second in the country that the difference between this and versus um, there's a lot of faith-based um, sex trafficking restorative centers, as you call it, or receiving centers. But Daybreak is different because it's under a licensed residential program. So they can come in basically for crisis stabilization for 30 days of treatment of intense treatment one-on-one -on -one with their mental health therapist. And we also address their substance use disorder and um, just, it's just a whole gamut of things you can only imagine. And then we're going to try to partner with these faith-based um, entities and see if they can do long-term care because we know that just you know, 30, 60, 90 days of treatment is, is really not enough. That's why we see at daybreak, we see repeat clients coming back, um, which is good and bad um, because it's just, and it's just so prevalent now with, um, and now we're dealing with fentanyl issues. Mm, and so just, bad. Yeah. And the suicide rate has skyrocketed along with the self-harm. The self-harming is just so common now it's just and that we saw at the beginning of the pandemic and i think it's just going to be a ripple effect that we're just we're just starting to see everything now um and then you compile the the fentanyl issue i mean it's a it's a nationwide issue and then all the budget cuts and i mean with like Putney, looky there that they cut their addiction i mean program and daybreak is facing the same battle because even though there's all this funding now to fight it they're focusing it on mental health you know it, it's just like our society is just um they're, they're not proactive they're reactive like you know remember it was opioids and you know there was a lot of money going to the opioid problem and now it's like mental health but it's like they don't understand that they coincide and so it's like why not you know support these agencies that address both of these um just like you know i just think it was a, such a shame that Putney shut down okay my cat and dog are fighting right now <laughs> hey, hey so uh, i would show I, they're like really fighting over the toy <laughs> um yeah, no, Tabitha, it's just, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. And I don't know if anyone has the, the answer. So, I mean, we're just plugging along, doing what we can. And um, you really just need long-term treatment and long-term, you know, yeah. severe outpatient. I mean, intensive outpatient, just follow up and you need to keep tabs on people. <laughs> exactly. No. Um, well, so uh, maybe go a little more in depth on how an individual comes to daybreak and kind of what, what is that process? How do they get to you guys? Like what, what does that look like? And then what is their life like at daybreak? No, exactly. Well, um, we get, and this is another problem how, um, or I shouldn't say it's a problem. It's, um, difficult. <laughs> um, it's challenging is the word, I guess I'm looking for, so a lot of our clients come through um, probation officers. They bring them in with their PO officer. They, they come straight from ju ju juvie. Um, and our clients are, we're, we're down in our census, even though the problem has totally escalated because kids are not really in school. And we get a lot of referrals from the counselors. And um, when their grades are, are doing, when they're doing poorly in school, then it comes to their attention, they're failing. But I think teachers are so overwhelmed 
Um, they're letting kids, kids are getting to, they're sliding through school. They're just letting kids pass because everyone is so far behind. It's just, the problem just keeps perpetuating itself. You can just imagine how it's snowballing. Um, so, and now that police officers, at least in the state of Washington, are not able to, you know, make arrest just for drug abuse, you know, if they just, everything's just, everyone's turning their head the other way. So until like a parent sees that, and that's what's unfortunate is Daybreak is the largest Medicaid provider in the state. Wow. So mm -hmm, a lot of, most of our clients, they're either in the foster care system, they're, um, you know, we've got a lot of tribal kiddos. We've got, it's just, these are the kids that are forgotten. These are the kids that fall through the cracks and they're the ones that, you know, end up on the streets when they're in their twenties and thirties. And this is addicted to drugs. And that in our society wants to stop the um, homeless problem. You have to stop the homeless problem in junior high. You know, you need to get these kids. Well, you've seen at Children's Village, you know, you, you've seen it, the parents involved and the, it's just heartbreaking. And then now with the sex trafficking is, you know, now that's getting a lot of, I mean, Jeff Epstein probably did society somewhat of a favor by exposing this, that it's, you know, it's a huge problem that everyone pretended happened in other countries. And it's just as large and prevalent here, if not more so. And I'm still shocked at what I'm learning about um, the whole sex trafficking. Um, yeah. And I was, I was hearing about like, um, I mean, how many indigenous women have been missing and it just blows my mind, the statistics and no one's looking for them and it's just and they're being sold in in sex trafficking I just it's just insane the numbers I've been reading it is and I'm going to send you an article about a little 15 year old girl that was at the Mavericks game with her dad she went to the bathroom never returned and they couldn't act on it I mean it's like there's cameras everywhere they found her 10 days later in Oklahoma after um on pornographic websites so it's mind boggling. I will send you this article and the police in Dallas, Texas could not act on it because of some family law. It just makes, um, it just makes zero sense to me. So I was going to look into that more because I'm super curious as to why they could not, you know, find this little girl sooner than 10 days later. Yeah. So back to my other question, what, um, so you, you get an individual that comes to daybreak and so they live there full time, correct? And you guys put them through a program, school, those kind of things. It is a great program. I mean, so typically the average day is um, like 60 days, 45, 60 days. Um, we have kept girls longer that are that need it. We've actually even kept a couple of clients um, over six months because they were expecting a baby. And we just don't want them going out and using again. And we will just keep them um, free of charge. This is why we do our fundraising because um, insurance isn't, isn't covering anymore. And a lot of times this is where we, this is why it's just imperative that we fundraise and just try to keep these, these kids you know, safe. And a lot of times they will, when they leave daybreak and they're not quite ready, um, they will, I've had several girls tell me that they're gonna go out and reoffend just so they can come back. Mm -hmm. so, and so this is what we're dealing with. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's like, you feel good that you've been, they feel good there, but you're also like, um, we don't want you causing more issues. Exactly. I know it's so hard. I don't, I wish I knew the answer. I mean, I just feel I'm just a small little piece in the puzzle that, um, and my, my title is the life enrichment director. So I just feel like that's all I can do is just provide them, a, you know, at least some fun while they are there in treatment. So whenever I went back to be a counselor, I realized like during my internship, I did my internship at daybreak and I would just ha have to sit in because you need like 1500 supervised hours, you know, to be a, you know, a counselor and just listening to story after heartbreaking story after heartbreaking story, I would just come home. Like I am so sad. And like, my husband was like going, you're my happy person. What happened to you? You know, <laughs> I, I need you to be happy. My job's stressful. And I'm just like, this is horrible. I said, I don't think I can do it. And that's whenever I went to, you know, my boss at the time and just said, I'm struggling. You know, I don't see 
how you guys do this. And she was like, oh, you'll get, oh, you, you learn, you can just cope. Here's lots of books. You can coping mechanisms. But I, I mean, I think someone seriously needs to start out a, a new business counselor for counselors. I mean, like basically they need their own therapy group just to decompress. And so um, I said, I just don't think this is the field for me. I love it here at Daybreak. I admire what you guys are doing. And they basically created a job for me. They said, how about if you, you know, bring some life to the building and make it fun for these girls. And you know, what's interesting is that within the first year, the completion rate of the girls went from 40% to 90% in a year. And I'll tell you why, because there's a difference between completion rate and success and success rate. You know, I mean, we don't really monitor the success rate. You know, we, we do like a one year follow up to see where they are, but you know, these are 12, 13, 14 year old girls, you know, so, and we see them, you know, come back, but completion rate is different in, in that they stay the full time because at age 13, you can check yourself out, you know, of care, you know, at age 13, in the state of Washington. Of, of treatment if you don't want to be there. And a lot of times That's crazy to me, that's crazy. 13. I, as a 13 year old, I'm like, no, what? No, I should not be making my own decisions all the time because you're 13. <laughs> right. Well, and there <laughs> are some hormones. <laughs> it's mind boggling. And they all want to go back to their boyfriend. You know, they're back on the phone with their, their phone calls that they get in that they have like a half an hour for phone calls and they're kind of monitored and they're like, Nope, I want, I want to I want out. I want to go back, you know, to the West side and go back to my boyfriend. So there are, we're, we're pushing for some laws to change that and, you know, to keep kids in treatment that need to be. But um, so, but the life enrichment program, we made it fun for these kids to be kids. And it wasn't all about treatment nonstop. Like you said, when you're 13, 14 years old and you're in group session, you're in school, then you're in personal counseling sessions. It's, it's a lot of heavy, Yeah, and, you know, so the life enrichment program, and that's the other thing for the fundraising. So, you know, I just feel like I'm always fundraising. Thanks. Um, I get it. <laughs> I know, I know, but it's, it's necessary. And um, so, and we've got some great community partners that want to help too. So they provide these services for very, I mean, small dollar amounts like we peak seven is a rafting um a guided service so they I go, love them yes oh they're so awesome they, so they helped us I think boys and girls club they did some stuff with me when I worked for them and they were just wonderful humans they give you like really great rates so that they can help oh it, I love them love yep. them they do the mountain climbing. They do the whitewater rafting twice a year. They do kayaking. They're just all about the outdoors. So yeah, you should pick up with them. See, That's a great idea. Yeah, they're great. I for, almost forgot about that. It's been so long, but they're a wonderful organization. Another partnership for Idaho, Washington. Absolutely. And they might want to expand because they've got one in Seattle area too, but they're, awesome. they're fabulous. Well, I'll give you the guy's name Perfect. that I adore. Perfect. Um, and, um, like legacy boxing. So the girls get to go to boxing class once a week and he refuses to charge us anything. He does it all pro bono. So we've got a lot of partners that are pro bono. Um, and you know, a lot that just charge. Oh, and embrace. We drive to Athol, um, Idaho every week because the girls go to equine therapy oh, and I love that. Mm -hmm. they're phenomenal as well. So just so that's the so the life enrichment program back to like how it went from basically a failing grade to like 40 percent to like an a <laughs> within one year is because they had fun and they were exposed to different opportunities that they've never had before and they could just be a kid and had something to look forward to and treatment was pleasurable yeah. instead of just all you know work 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 and no play so that's, that's a lot <laughs> That's a lot. I mean, I, I will give myself credit for the life enrichment program and that's, and it's made me a lot happier. So, you know, I, I was with the girls a lot. I was the one that was transporting them to and from all these activities for probably like the past um, three years before COVID. And now I've just kind of pivoted into more of the development, you know, side and more. So I'm not as involved with the girls 
in the past and I miss it. I miss it a little bit. So um, I bet. I bet. Yeah, exactly. Because that's also why, you know, when I worked for Children's Village or anything with the kids, when you go from working day to day with them, it is it's a little bit of stress reliever, but yeah. it's also you miss that's the reason you're doing it. But then it also helps you raise money more because you actually worked in the trenches. You know how important the money is. And so I think it kind of is one of those double-edged swords where it's, it's a good and bad thing, but yeah, I think it's very important. Um, one kind of serious question I was going to ask about this stuff is I hear a lot, especially in North Idaho, I hear people that don't understand, you know, like you said, gender identity, people that just can't get out of it, uh, you know, out of like, out of that drug, out of the abuse, out of all of these things, or, you know, um, taking their own life and things like that. What would you say to someone, you know, that doesn't understand these things? and trying to understand people, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? It's like, I just, yeah, I hear that a lot. And I'm just like, it, you don't understand it because of the mental health behind it. Well, not only that, and I think a lot of people think, well, it's, it's a choice. You know, they, they, they decided they made bad choices and now this is what happens. But if they only knew the, the history as to why they did it, I mean, sure. There's, there's every now and then the one kiddo that is their, their mind, their, their, body chemistry, they, they take the one, you know, hit of something and they are, they're, they're you know, supposedly hooked. But um, as, as far as just understanding the whole mental, people just self-medicate, they're masking their, their trauma. Every, every kid that's come through daybreak has had trauma and it's severe trauma. I mean, like everyone can say, oh, they've had trauma. I mean, you know, I feel like, you know, I, I've had trauma. I mean, I, we freaking lost a house to a house fire with our pets in it. You know, where there was nothing there. I mean, that's trauma, but it's like, eh, you get over it and you know, no, um, and you, you, you move on, but people that just have repetitive trauma to the people that they're supposed to care for them. It's just unimaginable. Like the stories that I've heard with these, these girls, with their upbringing, you know, dad's in prison, you know, mom is on the streets in and out of the home, you know, they're the 14 year old taking care of the little three year old and just um, you, you saw it at children's village. I mean, they're just all horrific stories and that's all they know. You're, you live in a crack house as a baby that you're just going to be exposed to that. And you, and half of these kids are a lot of fetal alcohol, so, you know, just, just horrendous they're just born into it and it's really hard to get out of it unless you have someone in your corner some type of uh, an escape I should I shouldn't say that word some type of a whether it be you know a church group or a foster a caring foster family um, a counselor that you can stay with long term just someone that you can trust and lean on even if it's a good friend and that's what I tell the girls at daybreak just you know, find your support group with your friends. When you're out, you girls can, you know, keep in contact and just be each other's rocks. I mean, so, and we do have success stories. I mean, when, when they come back and say, thank you, Daybreak saved my life. I mean, they're few and far between, but they're the ones that keep you going, you know? Yeah, that's a great point is that that part right there is what, that's what keeps you going is those success, those successful stories. But unfortunately, like you said, there's a lot of these people are born into, these situations. And that's all they know. That's all they know is poverty. That's all they know is drug and alcohol and how to cope. And, and all of these people that I see like judging and, you know, uh, you know, don't not understanding is also, they have their own coping mechanism. It's just not on the scale of what a lot of these other people are dealing with. And so it's just, it, it's one of those things I'm like, I want to shake people. Sometimes I'm like, you don't understand what they've gone through and they're just trying to get through each day. Right. No. And I would, highly recommend if anyone's curious, you know, call me for them to come on a tour. Like you said, it was super impactful and the tours are led by, you know, the, the clients. So we usually choose two clients that want to give the tour and they will open up and share, you know, their, their stories and it's, it's gut wrenching. And I give them credit to do that to a room full of strangers, you know, to, I almost forgot about that when the, one of the girls gave me a tour, um, there was a couple of us and I, and I was just like, and she was so well-spoken and she was like very straightforward. She's like, this is what my life's like. And I was like, holy cow, like you are an amazing human. And like, 
I can't, I can't even imagine like you're going through and you can still do stuff like this. And they're very transparent. A lot of them were about yep. what's going on. Yep. So it's actually, you know, it's, it's truly enlightening and, you know, just people can't understand. Like we, we have our one client that's on the receiving center right now. And, you know, we can, I get, to, I have access to read, you know, their, their intake form, just kind of their background a little bit. And she's detoxing, you know, been sick the whole time she's been there. She's been only been like four or five days. And like the, the intake said, she's very angry. She's not allowed to call her pimp because, you know, just, the, it just shows you the mind control, like, you know, and something like she has to ask if it's okay for her to eat because she's supposed to, she's supposed to stay thin. So, you know, there's just all these, you know, you, the mind games, you know, for these young girls to like, I have to ask what I can eat. So she's refusing to eat right now. So this is, this is what the counselors have to deal with. How, to, how do you overcome that? Oh my gosh. That's like, that's just like one story. I can't even imagine what you guys see every hour, every day. <laughs> not, not, yeah. Yeah. Like scared to eat unless she calls her you know, pimp to ask what's okay to eat. Oh my gosh. Well, so. on like, on more of the positive, um, talk to us a little bit about your fundraising. Um, what's coming up, what's happening. So how can me and my followers and my, my community support you guys? Um, tell us what's coming up, uh, for you guys. Well, as you know, how fun was that to be involved in the Idify <laughs> drug-free youth lip syncing? Tabitha, you, you and Bailey were awesome. <laughs> we awesome. definitely threw it together. We said, we said next year, we're going to have like some choreography. We're going to get a little ahead of it. Maybe grab a couple extra girls. Now that people have seen that it's not that scary and that's really fun. Exactly. And that's the whole point. It's just like, oh, it was, until you're there. And that's why I kept um, stalking you saying, <laughs> you would need to do this. This is so up your alley. You will be fine. And literally you girls just, you showed up. You weren't even able to come to the practice. We didn't even recruit you till after we had all the bands, a couple of bands backed out. I guess they got stage fright before the event. Yeah. So, well, uh, Catherine's really good at that. She's like, girls, you'd be, you be really great at this. And then she's like, Hey, just checking in. You're going to do this. And I was like, yes, it's for the kids. Why not? <laughs> and there you were with your pom poms and everything. I loved it. No. And well, you saw it really is a fun event and not even, I just think at the knitting factory, it's even going to, you know, escalate the fun vibe and just, I just want people to come and we actually have a discounted code. If you go on to the daybreak website and you'll go under the events, um, you can, we have tickets now for $25. We just want to get people in there to see, to see what, if they want to get involved, just like at the Idify one, once people saw it, there was like the sign up sheet for next year, back in the back, 12 people came back and were like, when I want in, I want to be in the band because you know, it's your little two minutes of, you know, fame and to pretend you're a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone's listening, you can go back. I have some videos, but yeah, Bailey and I did Gwen Stefani, Hollaback Girl, and we lip sync it. Bailey looked exactly like Gwen. So she it, was, it was fantastic. And so now we're doing the same thing in Spokane to raise money for, um, yes. uh, I, is it, and so you guys are, is it daybreak that you're raising money for? It's for daybreak. So just, just in general for the life enrichment program for the sex trafficking receiving center. I mean, it's just, it all goes back to the girls, you know, 100% of it goes back to the clients. Perfect. Uh, and I, and I will tell you some of the, do you want to hear some of the bands that we have? Yes, so far? Well, we have 12. So the two, the AC, you know, double D AC, that one, um, two years in a row at the Idafi one. And then the sketchy Palmer, the Robert Palmer, simply irresistible. So those two bands. Are I would hope they would do it again because that looked like a lot of work. Right. And they had a lot of band members and they're all coming. So they're all able to perform again. So they're performing again. So if you missed it in Idaho, come watch it in Spokane. It's this Thursday, the 26th. And um, so those two bands are performing. And then we have. Washington Trust Bank put together a band and they're doing Pour Some Sugar on Me. They're doing Def Leppard, which will be fun. We've got Global Credit Union. They are doing a Spice Girls. We've got um, Dusty Wetzler, who owns Lightbeat, the um, country line dancing lesson. Awesome. 
they're doing obviously a country song. I'm not quite sure. I can't remember. Um, and we've got um, a solo act. He's doing LL Cool J. I don't know what that's going to be oh like. Oh my gosh. Um, yes. That's awesome. So we've got some fun, some fun bands. So I'm not able to think off the top. Oh, we've got CB High School Theater Group. They're going to do a queen. Oh, I they're bet doing- that will be queen. Oh, I bet that'll be great. Especially theater kids. They're like, they don't hold back. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, and after watching the Idafy one, we came up with a new um, award since they're like the three categories to win, you know, best overall, best costume. Yeah. Um, and then what was the other one? Best choreography. So okay. we're doing a um, YOLO award the you only live once award. I love it. I love it. <clears throat> that is awesome. Well, my favorite person of the, of the Idafy night was the flash dance girl um yellow award that i was like she should have won i was like why is she not winning she did flash dance to a t i was so impressed i know she came up to the judges you know that did you see you know how she threw our papers away I was oh yeah just like just like flash dance and i love the they poured the water but it was actually like uh oh, boas noodles or the yeah the water noodles it was no, she was amazing. And I don't know, you didn't see a lot of people in the back couldn't see, but she fell. She totally did her jump and she slipped on the, the fake money that the money guns were thrown up there. And she rolled and she does the, woohoo, I'm okay. Yeah. But so a lot of people didn't even know she fell. Like she, she busted her she knee. She pulled it off. She totally pulled it off. That's the one. And that's what we said. She's, like, she's got to win something. She has got to win something. So that's hence the YOLO award. I will yeah, try to. She was insane. I was, I was like, I wanted to talk to her. I didn't see her, but I was like, that was my favorite act. It was so, I mean, there were so many good ones. And the cute little girl at the beginning with the nuns. Oh, the sister act. Oh my gosh. That was, they did such a good job with that. There was such some clever, clever, I mean, yeah. So I can't wait to see what's going to happen at the Knitting Factory. I love the partnership that whoever wins now at the Idafy one will get to come and perform over in Spokane. So it's a great partnership. That title, I like it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What if if someone cannot attend? Is there a way that anyone can support you guys, even though I know it's this Thursday, people might not be able to make it or something comes up. How can people still support you or donate? Um, Cause I know oh, okay. flag, you can, you can, people can donate from home. Uh, yeah. there, is it similar? Yes, totally similar. So yes. Um, so if you just go on the website and obviously it's like ways to donate and okay. gives the different items, like even a $25 donation, it supplies a um, welcome pack. Cause these kids, like I said, they come from juvie, but just their clothes on their back. And so it's basically just, a little bag with toiletries and, you know, fidget spinner and like a squishy stress ball and crossword puzzles and a journal and a little beanie baby and just kind of cute little things just all in a small welcome packet. So they have something when they arrive because, oh, and a fresh pillowcase. So we've got some, some ladies that um, make homemade pillowcases and they're called the material girls. How cute is that? I love that. I love that. Oh, no. So they bring um, like 20 fresh pillowcases each month. So it's really sweet. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. It's something nice that, like you said, if they become from juvie, like, and you have nothing. And so to have something that's yours, especially as a kid, like you want some like things that are yours that no one else is. And so I think that is like very important. Key. Key. Oh, and I'm going to put a plug for Project Beauty Share. Oh, they- I love them. Yes. Yes they provide like makeup for these girls and, you know, and we all know how expensive makeup is and just have your own, you know, really nice eyeshadow palette. They really covet it. It's just, it's really cute to see. And we use those for incentives, um, for their points to, they can go shopping in the store and project beauty share has been instrumental with that. Yeah. And all we all know as young girls, we want to have our mascara or we want to have like our certain things that we love. And like these girls, you know, don't have it or, you know, anybody, any individual doesn't have it. It's so nice to have that for them. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. So it's, it's, it's all good. And, um, you know, we just need to just keep doing what we're doing and stay the course and, um, not, not give up as frustrating as it is. And as daunting as the numbers are, um, and I think everyone's 
felt a little bit of this, you know, during COVID and maybe it shed some light on, you know, if you know the impact, you know, COVID and withdrawal and just um, all the negative about everything that, yeah, just. Me and my friends have been talking about this nonstop. I mean, even someone, you know, like my, me and my friends, we talk about how more negative minded we can be since COVID. Like we think the worst is going to happen all the time. It's just weird that like how much this affected everything not only what you're dealing with, but like, just even, you know, anybody, it's like, it's crazy what happened to our world. It is crazy. It is crazy. Not to sound all doom and gloom because, you know, and I've seen the change with, with even the clients, like used to, they were super excited to go out to like, oh, yay, we get to go to, you know, barbell class. I mean, to, you know, do the little workout, the pure bar, we get to go to, um, you know, boxing. And now it's kind of like, they're just really so depressed that they're not even motivated to, you know, get out of their room. They just want to, you know, stay cooped up and inside. And I just don't, I just think that's just the way we have to change that mindset. And once, you know, I can talk them into it or our rec leader can talk them into it. Once they're there, they're like, this is great. And then they're excited to go the next time, but it's just like, I can, that's a change. That is a shift in mental change just in the pre COVID. We call it what AC and BC after COVID and before COVID. Completely. It's, it's the new biblical terms. The AC. It is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> one more last question for you before we um, sign off. Well, one is if someone wants to do- like just be part of Daybreak, how can they get a hold of you? What if they want to donate or they have, you know, some kind of good partnership? How do they get a hold of you to help Daybreak? Out? Oh, I give my phone number out to anyone and everyone. Find me, like Catherine Reynolds, Facebook, Catherine Coates Reynolds, find my cell phone. I'm 509 939 6716. Hit me up. <laughs> and she's wonderful, you guys. Um, the energy from you is wonderful. I just adore you. Last question What is a piece of advice we just talked about? BC, AC, um, so what, what kind of piece of advice would you give someone that is maybe still struggling or seeing the after effects of this negativity or whether it's affected their life? Just a little like positive piece of advice for someone out there. There's so many good apps. I mean, and Tabitha, what you do, I mean, just connect with someone. I mean, someone that you haven't reached out to in a while, just say, let's go grab a cup of coffee, you know, even, just reconnect with someone. I mean, don't hole up. I mean, that's obviously what people are doing. And I just feel like that's why people aren't getting out in the community as much. It just seems like events are just starting to vamp up again. I mean, I just felt like the energy in that room at Idafy was awesome. Awesome. I mean, that's just what, you know, I just, we all just want to create a little bit of happiness and I just want to, you know, sprinkle some little see dust everywhere. (laughs) We all need some sparkle. (laughs) Yes, we do. Well, Catherine, thank you so very much. This was wonderful. Thanks for listening to Keeping Tabs. I'm Tabitha Kruk, and every Monday I release a podcast about different community members here in North Idaho. And then we end the weeks on Fridays with a podcast about the things I'm passionate about, outdoors, adventures, sports, the van life, and even current events. So if you like what you heard, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube, Spotify, or iTunes. Thank you again. Now go be kind and do something great.